In this video, I'm going to go over the general life cycle of gymnosperms, and we're going to use conifers as our example. Recall that conifers are seed plants and part of the larger group called vascular plants. Because of this, the dominant stage of the life cycle is the sporophyte generation. So the tree that we see is diploid and multicellular. Gymnosperms organize their sporangia on stroboli, and on a conifer, there are two types of stroboli or cones. The first kind is the male cone, which some people refer to as the pollen cone, and the second one is the female cone. Although both of these cones bear sporangia, they're both quite distinct from one another. The pollen cones or male cones tend to be soft and flexible because they are derived from leaves. The female cones are hard and woody because they are derived from stem tissue like bracts. We're going to start by having a closer look at the male cones. And one thing you should notice is that the male cones are organized in a cluster. Each one of these is an individual cone and if we zoom in, we would see a series of several stacked sporangia. If I zoom inside a single sporangium, what I see is a structure that looks like this. That would be the microsporangium. And it's actually supported by some tissue that's part of the sporophyte. So here's the microsporangium. Being supported by some extra tissue from the sporophyte. Inside the microsporangium are a series of cells. You might be tempted to think that these cells are the spores, but they're not. These, in fact, are the microsporocytes. The microsporocytes are the cells that undergo meiosis to give us the microspores themselves. So if we have a look at one of these after it undergoes meiosis, you would see that it forms a diagnostic structure that's called a tetrad. Remember that the product of meiosis is always four things. So we have a tetrad of microspores. Given that we've made spores, each of these spores is then going to undergo mitosis to form the microgametophyte. The microgametophyte is multicellular. It's the product of the mitotic division of microspores, and we typically refer to the microgametophyte as pollen. It's important to keep in mind that each of these microsporocytes that you see is going to undergo division. So these microsporocytes undergo division to form a tetrad of microspores, each one of which can divide into a pollen grain. So that goes a long way in explaining why there's so much pollen produced by conifers. Coupled with this is the fact that the pollen of conifers is oftentimes air dispersed. And so there are accessory structures on the pollen grain called air sacs. Looking closer at the female now, I'm going to zoom in on one scale of this cone. When I do that, what I see is the outer hard woody surface. 
there's a little opening at the base. And inside of that, we have the megasporangium. And just to emphasize this, I'm going to color in the megasporangium here in blue so that you can see its structure. Notice that the megasporangium is enclosed and protected by the sporophyte because in seed plants, the spores never leave the parent plant. They develop in place into either mega or micro gametophytes. Similar to the male, on the inside of the megasporangium, there is a single cell, and that single cell is called the megasporocyte. The megasporocyte is the cell that is going to undergo division to give us our megaspores. And so after we have meiosis, we once again end up with that same structure with the megasporangium internally. But instead what we have are four megaspores. There are not enough nutritive resources to allow for the development of four total megaspores and so there is some programmed cell death or apoptosis whereby three of the megaspores die and one remains to undergo mitosis to give us our fully developed megagametophyte. So now we have the mitotic division of the megaspore, which gives us rise to our fully mature megagametophyte. One thing to keep in mind is that there are several rounds of mitosis necessary to produce the fully developed megagametophyte. The megagametophyte of gymnosperms, in contrast to angiosperms, is relatively large and it holds two archegonia. So once again, I'm drawing the remains of my megasporangium, and inside we have two archegonia. Remember, archegonia produce eggs. So inside each archegonium, there is an egg. Recall that the eggs are haploid. So now what we need is for sperm to be delivered to produce a zygote. Recall that I told you that pollen of gymnosperms is oftentimes wind dispersed. So off of these pollen cones, what we get is several grains of pollen that with the help of their air sacs are able to travel long distances through the air. If you go outside during certain times of the year, you'll notice your car is completely covered by all kinds of yellow pollen, especially if you live near a large tree. And this pollen makes its way all the way to the scale of the cone. The pollen works its way down and eventually ends up on the outer edge of the remains of the megasporangium. After which, each pollen grain grows a pollen tube to deliver one sperm to each egg.
If you were to examine the scale of a pine tree or other conifer up close, you would notice that at the base of each scale, there are two small depressions or divots that at one time contain seeds. So once the egg is fertilized, these two zygotes grow and develop into mature seeds. Seeds of conifers are also when dispersed, and it's important to note that we have multiple layers here. So we have inside a seed, the young developing new sporophyte generation that we're gonna call the embryo, and it's diploid. On the outside of that, we have a protective layer which helps the, the seed survive harsh conditions. That's called the seed coat. And then internally, we have the remains of the megagametophyte tissue. So this is all haploid tissue, and that contrasts sharply with what we're going to see in angiosperms. So that megagametophyte tissue is nutritive for the developing embryo and is haploid. Now last but not least, these seeds are usually enclosed by some structures that help them disperse through the wind. Eventually landing and growing through lots of mitosis, eventually into the next sporophyte generation. Although the gymnosperm life cycle on the surface looks rather complicated, it's important to note that it still follows the same basic alternation of generations life cycle that we've learned about. Sporophytes give rise to spores, spores grow into gametophytes, gametophytes make gametes which fuse to make a zygote that grows into the next sporophyte generation. That same pattern is repeated in this life cycle. You should also recall that seed plants are all heterosporous, so they have different sizes of spores that eventually develop into specialized gametophytes. For the male, we develop a microgametophyte that is the primary mechanism of dispersal in seed plants. That's pollen. In contrast, megaspores never leave the parent plant. Instead, they develop in place into megagametophytes, which are ultimately fertilized by sperm that come from pollen. Once fertilized, the zygote grows and develops into a seed. The seed represents the next sporophyte generation. It is surrounded by a protective layer that is from the original sporophyte called the seed coat and is surrounded or enclosed by a whole bunch of nutritive tissue that is the remains of the megagametophyte and is thus haploid. This is going to contrast sharply with what we see in angiosperms.